Hi, I'm Darren Starwin, and I'm excited to bring you this message entitled, A New Kind of Practitioner is Called for Now, How Lightworkers Can Claim Their True Power at This Vital Time. The unprecedented times that we're living through now are creating unprecedented opportunities for lightworkers. Now, I'm using this term lightworker to refer to those of us who are committed to healing, honoring life, and serving the earth. Now, while most lightworkers do tend to be drawn into the healing and helping professions, they can actually be from any walk of life. We are much more powerful than we know and accept. The power of lightworkers stems from our willingness to align ourselves with unlimited sources of consciousness and love, and also a willingness to heal and to serve. One of the highest truths is that our core essence exists in oneness with all life. Now, it's vital that we understand and embody this truth of oneness because duality, the denial of oneness, is the root cause of suffering, disease, and all kinds of negative acting out on our planet right now. Because almost everyone on Earth is caught up in this illusion of duality, we can accurately say that we're living through a fallen state of humanity right now. As a race, we've externalized our focus away from who we really are, and we're bound up in deep, complex, internalized taboos against knowing the totality of our own self. So yes, we lightworkers are much more powerful than we know, and we tend to avoid being powerful. So many of us are responding with fear and uncertainty as we witness what's going on around us in the world. But do we ever stop to think why these things are happening and what our responsibility is? Let's look a little deeper to understand this very vital point. Now, lightworkers are very comfortable and love talking about love, wisdom, understanding, knowledge, co-creation, manifestation, and things like this. But we start talking about power, so many of us cringe and go into reaction. Check this out for yourself. When you say or think about power, what comes up for you? So many associate power with something abusive, negative, or ego-based. I know that's been true for me. When I think about being as powerful as I know I could be, fears come up about how people will judge me for being an egomaniac or how I just might lose control and go berserk hurting myself and others with my power. Now, might these reactions be implanted programs to prevent us from being as powerful as we are and really not ultimately real? Or could they be throwbacks to past times that are no longer controlling us or relevant to us now? Now, not everyone's afraid of power. If you've been following what's going on in our country and in our world, I'm sure you're aware that there's a small group of politicians, corporate leaders, and power brokers that have been amassing major amounts of wealth while the real income of most people has declined. The same pattern has been mirrored all over the world. Now, I'm going to use the term the power elite to refer to this small group of people who have been doing everything they can to amass power and wealth while undermining democratic checks and balances or we can just call them the elite for short. Now, I'm not saying that most corporate executives and politicians are part of this power elite. I mean, as the name elite suggests, we're talking about a very small group of people who are wielding and accumulating tremendous influence. Now, this power elite is not bothered by dualities and falsehoods. In fact, they thrive on them. They gain their power through the principle of divide and conquer. As long as they can make one faction of society mistrust and fear another, they win. They don't really ultimately care that much about the issues they're stirring up. What really matters to them is the principle of divide and conquer, the acquisition of power. Many lightworkers have deep soul memories of also being very powerful, even more powerful than the power we see politicians abusing now. Some of us may also have deep soul memories of misusing that power when we had it, and having catastrophic experiences as a result, the proverbial fall from grace. Therefore, we tend to be afraid and confused about wielding power now. We tend to spend a lot of our power caught up in internal battles with ourselves, struggling with old traumas, fears, especially fears of our own mind's power to thwart us or to stress us out. Now, the elite does not fear that kind of thing very much, they glory in playing out their hand of power grabbing as long as they can, even though that there may be really bad consequences for themselves and their own descendants, and it's very short-sighted. That kind of power is unsustainable. 
That's because in that game, there's a small number of big winners and a large number of losers over time. And history has proven time and time again that those losers will rise up eventually and dethrone those rulers. Now the power of the light is sustainable because it's sourced in a self-regenerating infinite source of love, power, and abundance for all. So here is a really vital question. How can we light workers claim and work with our true power while remaining open-hearted and in sync with consciousness? Well, it's clear that we can't build our power through duality like the elite does. We can reclaim our power through learning to focus on the point of oneness within us more of the time and really coming from that place. Now, this is often called the zero point. By experiencing this over and over, we can rebuild our confidence in being expressions of that infinite consciousness and love that trumps all types of self-serving power. A new kind of practitioner is called for now. And this is a call to people who are willing to integrate multidimensional therapies into their professional work. Those who hear this call and step up are becoming part of one of the greatest new growth industries that exists in our world. These are practitioners that commit to coming from their zero point as much as possible so that they can maintain and emanate conscious presence as they do their work. Now, doing that effectively requires our own deepening process of transformation and personal awakening. I just referred to multidimensional treatment. Let me explain a little bit what I mean by that. Let's go over the three major dimensions that are really active in client care. Okay, the first one that we all understand well is 3D, or third dimensional. So third dimensional is the realm of the physical world. So therefore, a third dimensional medicine is any type of diagnosis or treatment that focuses on the physical body, its energy systems, and our beliefs and our mind about these. Therefore, that's going to be most types of medicine that exist in the world. Now, 4D, or fourth dimension, is the realm of the psyche and the mind. It's more unlimited, and it's of a higher frequency and vibration than the third dimension. So therefore, it holds a lot of new potentialities, yet it is still based in duality just as much as the third dimension is. It's just at a more subtle level. Okay, now 5D, or fifth dimensional medicine. 5D is a transcendent realm that we can practically work with in our therapies. 5D is the bridge between the world of duality, like 3D and 4D, and the infinite realm of divinity and consciousness. The quality of 5D is universal love. Quantum healing is an expression of 5D healing, as is working with the power of intention. Now, the holistic energy-based therapies that we're all familiar with, like acupuncture, homeopathy, energy work, body work, flower essences, frequency-specific microcurrent, working with crystals, working with psychology in the mind, shamanism, all these types of things, when performed skillfully, any of these can help clients move through episodes of pain and various types of disease and distress. But what after that? Are we really being honest with our clients and with ourselves about what's really needed? Are we really understanding why there's such a huge epidemic now of people who are going through so much destabilization and stress and overwhelm? In light of this, offering palliative and even energy balancing therapies to help people move through their difficult and painful situations may not be enough to really give them the support they're actually coming to us for, whether they really know it or not. Our medicine should be more than that and in sync with planetary need. Otherwise, it's not really fully serving. Our medicine should really be in sync with our higher purpose and can actually be seen as a form of activism. Why? Because it's a bold political and service act to hold a focal point of light and the quantum field, to hold this zero point focus more of the time and to help other people to get in touch with the unity within themselves so that they can step out of struggling within themselves and dealing with symptoms they don't understand and spending so much of their time not being free to move forward with their greatest contribution. So yes, by holding this consciousness, by adding this to what we're doing, we can help the people coming to us to awaken further, and then they help to become part of the solution. And then it goes on as a geometric progression. It ripples out from there. As we help people clear pain and disease at its root, they are becoming empowered to also become part of the solution. 
Now, I've spoken a lot about claiming and embodying power in this message, and it may seem kind of ephemeral and beyond the rational mind. But it is possible to rationally explain a sequence, at least one possible way that this could come down to make it seem more clear. So this sequence of claiming power could look something like this. Step one, we commit to self-love, self-connection, self-discovery, and to going within to connect with our own zero-point consciousness, our own sense of oneness, and basically build the muscle of connection to being in that place more of the time. That leads to step two, that as we become more familiar with the zero point and identify with it more through our day-to-day -day life, we learn to hold and emanate what I'm calling presence, this field of consciousness and love that is in our field and that people feel and pick up on. Now that leads to step three in this linear sequence, that as you hold presence more of the time, you become more familiar with the quantum field of unlimited possibilities which totally exists here anyway, it's just we become more aware of it. So when you're aware of and embodying this quantum field of unlimited possibilities, then you become a resource of unlimited possibilities for others. And that leads into step four, that as you do that, you can literally extend the quantum field to people in front of you or remotely or to groups and thereby help them to awaken to who they are and to move out of the realm of struggle into their own inner power and ability to make a difference on Earth. And then from there, it ripples out and expands exponentially. The mission of Bridge to Mastery Institute is to make quantum tools, techniques, methods, and community available to those who are committed to expanding their therapeutic abilities while being part of the solution on Earth now. Participation in Bridge to Mastery is both a commitment to the flowering of your professional effectiveness in a way that's highly relevant to the needs of our time, as well as a courageous act of service.